Would you like to share digital resources with your students on your JTLearn site? Document libraries in JTLearn can contain any digital content like audio or video recordings, screencasts, images, PowerPoints, and more, not just documents. Watch this screencast to learn how to create and organize JTLearn document libraries. You can place a document library on any page in JTLearn, such as your teacher page, course pages, or period pages. Your teacher page generally should have common items like your class schedule grid, feature builder, and identifying information about you as a teacher. Course pages generally have course-specific items like common digital resources and a calendar. Period pages generally have items like submission libraries, though some teachers place those on course pages. Period pages should also include password reset, and classwork web parts. So in general, most document libraries will go on your course pages, but you're free to place them wherever you like. Before you create any document library, decide upon a name. A document library is like a folder in JTLearn, so use naming conventions you would typically use for folders to organize them. Keep in mind, you can only use a name once on each page. If you use one from the past on a certain page and never truly delete it, you will be unable to use that name again until it's deleted. Naming conventions often include things like unit titles, section names, concept titles, and so forth. Decide which page you want your document library on. And for the purposes of this screencast, we're going to place document libraries on a course page. There are many ways you can organize your content, but we're going to look at co a common way that teachers use. Navigate to any course page. In this case, I'll navigate to my Physics 1 Honors page. Use the gear in the upper right hand corner to go to Add an App. And notice all the different apps we have access to. Go to the Document Library app. Double click. A dialog box pops up where we can enter the name of the document library, which I'm going to call Potential Energy. Notice that it takes us to our site contents. This shows everything I have placed on this particular course page. Because I'm the, on the course page, it shows the site contents for the course page. You can always get to your site contents for any page through the gear in the upper right hand corner. Now go back to the course page via the link at the top of the page. On this page, we can place a lot of general course content information like images, procedures, Twitter feeds, and more. There are a couple of ways we can make our document libraries appear on a page. One is in the Quick Launch navigation, and the other is directly on the page. To add a document library directly to a page, you want to navigate to the page that you would like to place your created document library on, so in this case our Physics 1 Honor page. Note it has already been created through the Add an App. You want to go to Edit in the upper right hand corner, then Insert, then App Part because it's an app. If you created it previously, you should see the name of the document library there. Place your cursor on the page where you would like the library to be positioned, then select Add. When you're finished, be sure to press Save so that it's saved actually on the page. You can also drag and move the library later when you are in this edit mode if you decide to change its location. If we insert more than a couple of document libraries on a page, it might get a little cluttered over time, especially if we have other content like images, text, and more residing there. So a way around this is to use links in the quick navigation. This is the navigation that's on the side. Notice how our new document library, Potential Energy, is residing under our recent creations in the Quick Launch navigation on the side menu. Let's move it so that it's under the Teacher Page link. So we want to go to Edit Links, and then we can actually drag the link from there. We can continue further as our semester or year progresses and add more um, libraries, document libraries underneath 
in the quick launch or we can continue to add, add document libraries on the main page. It really depends on how we want to organize our content. If we have a lot of document libraries though it might be best to place it in the quick launch navigation. Now let's look at how we can populate a document library with resources. We're going to navigate to the actual library so I'll click to potential library. Click plus new documents to add and navigate to and upload any digital resources you need for your course. So we can browse through any of our different documents. They can be PDFs, PowerPoints, MP4 uh, recordings, Word documents, anything that you need to use in your course. Select a document, click OK. Then we see that our document has actually uploaded to our potential energy document library. Keep in mind how you organize your content is often dictated by your course resources and course flow and your own personal preferences. Keep in mind as well to make things clear and consistent and consider your students and how they may view things. Sometimes it's even helpful to ask a few students if resources seem easily accessible. You can also survey your students at different points for feedback on your site. Be sure to watch the tutorial on how to create and organize JT Learn link libraries as another way to share digital resources with your students. Thanks for watching.